discussion for today is, is uh, basically about how you can efficiently manage your brooding unit. How best can you manage your broiler chicken brooding unit? Remember, broilers genetically were designed to convert everything that you feed them into meat. And these broilers have a very short lifespan. Having said that, let's look at the best or the recommended management practices for you to grow a bird that will reach market size or market weight in the shortest time possible. And what are those management practices or uh, management par parameters that you need to look out for when managing your uh, broiler brooding units? We are going to look at those factors that affect the, the internal environment of the brooding house that affect performance of your bird if you didn't uh, prepare the brooding house as expected. The internal environment of the brooder is very important. Or controlling the internal environment of the brooder is very important. Remember, our day old chicks are coming from a hatchery where the environment in the hatchery was under control. The, the humidity, the, the temperature, body temperature of the birds was controlled while in the hatchery. And now we are introducing them in a new environment, which is the brooder. What, what we are trying to achieve in a brooder environment is to mimic an environment that is almost similar to the natural environment provided by the mother hen. If our birds were being reared by the mother, uh, the mother would have a particular body temperature or humidity under which she will be protecting or covering her birds. This brooder is, is the artificial uh, hen and uh, the parameters that we need to look at in order for us or in order for the birds to grow optimally. And we are looking at factors like the light, the lighting in the room. We are looking at factors that like the temperature, the humidity, the flow size, the ventilation. All those are factors that are going to affect performance of the birds in the brooder. If we are to look at the different factors, for example, lighting. The first, three, but the first three to five days are very important in uh, ensuring that there is, there is maximum lighting in the room to enable uh, our birds to quickly adapt to the environment and also get used to, to the drinking and feeding places. So ensure that there is always light in the room uh, that will enable the birds to, to look around for where the eating and, and feeding places are. It is also important to, to understand that there are also two uh, important objectives or performance objectives that we look at when uh, keeping our birds in the brooder. Number one is, remember these birds are immunary uh, sensitive or there the immune system is still weak and the boosting of the immune system is done by providing the best brooding environment possible. Then at the same time, during the brooding period, we want our birds to develop the most functional digestive systems. Because remember, these birds are supposed to be eating and converting whatever they eat into meat. So everything that we provide to them, the environment that we provide for them should ensure that it facilitates uh, a highly performing immune system or a highly effective immune system and a well-developed uh, GI system or intestinal system that is going to be able to digest and absorb uh, the nutrients from the feed that the birds will be eating. The other important factor that you need to look at is the preparation of the flow. You should not leave the, f the flow bare. You don't want birds that are in direct contact with the flow. The flow is considered to be uh, cold compared to, to the body temperature of the bird. So ensure that you cover the flow with litter, for example, sawdust, or with paper. 
this will be able to insulate the, the feet of the bird from the flow. Wood shavings of this nature will provide a very good bedding for your birds. So you will need to, to, to spread these wood shavings on the floor of the brooder such that we prevent direct contact of the bird's feet with the flow. Remember, the temperature of the floor is expected to be low and uh, yet we need to, to raise or to boost the temperature of the bird. In a brooder, we, we expect the brooder temperature to be between 35 to 37 degrees centigrade. That temperature will be able to help in boosting or maintaining the body temperature of our birds. Remember, these birds at this age are very bad thermoregulators. These birds are, are not in position to boost or to raise their body temperature. So they need this external heat or temperature to boost their body temperatures. Then uh, when it comes to feeding, uh, the type of feed that we give to our birds is also important in facilitating proper growth and also helping them reach uh, marketing weight in the shortest time possible. And we recommend that the type of feed that we give our birds should be uh, in form of pellets because uh, birds will effectively use pellets compared to uh, the compounded feed or at least provide feed that is in crumbles. The birds will effectively utilize that kind of feed compared to the compounded feed. So the texture of the feed is also important in uh, sustaining or accelerating performance of our bird. On arrival, we recommend that you provide feed that is in pellet form or in, in, in crumbs. This, uh, this facilitates picking of the feed from the ground by the birds. Like you see, our birds are active, are active, or they are busy eating. Biosecurity is another very important factor. Always ensure that there is uh, maximum protection of our birds uh, from diseases or from any infections or from any uh, disease-carrying uh, organism that might be introduced into the, the, the brooder house. Sanitation is very important. The clothing that you use, the, the shoes and the clothing that you use in a brooder house should always be kept in the brooder house and not uh, brought out of the house because any exchange of, of clothing in and out will be another vehicle for introducing uh, diseases into your brooding house. Going back to feeding, ensure that on arrival, these birds are provided with, with feed and also with water. And uh, the placement of the, the drinkers and feeders should be in, in, in such a way that the birds are, uh, are able to access them uh, with ease. It is very important in the first hours uh, on receiving your birds to also look at how the birds are feeding and the feeding is, is evaluated by looking at the crop field. Ensure that you check out your birds to see if they are eating. And you can only tell whether the birds are eating by uh, gently pressing on, on the crop field. We expect a mixture of feed and water in the crop. So at least uh, by pressing on this crop, I can tell that this bird has started eating. Then the other point that you need to look at is on placement of the drinkers, ensure that you place enough drinkers in the brooder. We expect an average of, of, of uh, 20 to 20, 25 or to 30 birds per drinker. So ensure that you match the number of drinkers with the number of birds that you have 
in your brooder. Also ensure that you now also have enough feeders. There's no need for birds to fight for feeding space. So at least by the observation, we we'll really see that our birds have, uh, have been given enough feeders and there's uniform distribution of the feeders and the drinkers. This is very important in, uh, in the first 24 hours of the day. Ensure that the birds at least are able to make around 80 to 90 percent of their crop field in the first uh, 12 hours. And in the 24 hours, we should expect a 100 percent crop field of every bird in the room. We also recommend that you do random periodic weight measurements for your birds to keep track of how they are growing. On average, we expect our birds to put on 4.5 times their original weight. If a bird came weighing 40 grams, we expect it to put on 4.5 times that weight at the end of the first seven days. Then we expect our birds to put on 2.6 times the weight that they will have attained on day seven. It's very important that you keep track of growth performance of your birds. On receiving your birds, it's very important that you evaluate activity of the birds. We expect 25% of the birds to be playing, running around in the brooder, we expect 25% of the birds to be feeding, 25% of the birds to be drinking, and then 25% of the birds to be resting. We said that 25% of the birds should be feeding, 25% of them should be moving or should be playing, another 25% of the birds should be resting, you're seeing some uh, resting, though these birds have been in the brooder for over an hour now. In that way, you'll be sure of uh, a good flock of the birds that you've received. Always ensure that uh, you obtain your chicks from a certified hatchery. You don't want uh, poor performing genetics into your brooder, which genetics are going to become costly for you at the end of the production cycle. We want birds that keep growing. One of the quality control measures that we look at on receiving your birds, it's very important that you determine the average weight of your birds. Because the average weight of the birds give you a, will give you a clear indication on how they are going to be performing from day zero or from day one. Now, for example, when we look at this bird, this bird weighs around 46 grams. Our day old chick weighs around 46, around 45 grams. And I can do sampling for these different boxes and see whether in the same weight range. This one weighs 51 grams. This one is heavier than the first one. I can also do sampling for another box, for example this one, and then do where my bird. This one weighs uh, 45 grams like the first bird. So on average our birds are weighing uh, 44 to 46 grams, which is a good starting uh, weight. It's very important that these birds are always given a period of, of, of the day under which they will be able to rest and digest the feed that they have been able to eat. Uh, continuous lighting in the, in, in the brooder, most especially after five days, is not recommended. We need dark periods in the room that are going to help the birds to digest what they have been able to eat. 
Remember, as a standard, we expect birds to be putting on one kilogram of live body weight for every 1.6 kilograms of feed consumed.